are so pumped that you're here to join us today. How are you doing? Well, do open up our RLC app now to keep up with today's message notes. Alright, we we'll like to let you know what's happening in church every week. On Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, do tune in to our YouTube channel to continue with the Brahma Word with Holy Communion at 10 a.m. While on Sunday, we have the main service at 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Book a seat now with your zone pastor or join us online. While we have a place, chance and energize on demand every single week. Also not to forget to find out more about God as we learn God together in the Bible study classes on every Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. for the Kingdom series. Hey, hey, it's good to see all of you here again. Do you guys know what month is it? Right, it's Easter month. So we're going to be doing something special for all of you. We'll be sending some food and snacks over to you to enjoy the care of your CG. So if you haven't signed up for any CG, make sure you do sign up for one. So before we continue, let me share you an amazing testimony that we have received. Dear Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry, since I joined IRLC, the Lord has blessed me with excellent and SPM results. In the natural, I knew I could not have gotten such amazing results. But I always remembered Pastor Joshua's preaching from the first service I attended in IRLC to roll all my cares and worries over the Lord. In 1 Peter 5 7, to rest in Him and not to focus on the problem but on God. So, very important to be attentive to God's word. Huh? Many times at the pulpit, Pastor Kerry declared that students will be blessed with supernatural scholarships. I claim it in the name of Jesus every single time and confess it daily. My family and I have also been taking Holy Communion together on a daily basis. Praise God, I have just been granted a scholarship from the college of my choice in the UK where only four scholarships of the kind were offered worldwide. Ooh, amazing, amen. Thank you Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry for your love, prayers and teaching. I would also like to thank all the pastors of IRLC for their prayers, support and glory to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Now 
nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. In Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine. everyone we're so glad to have you join us today for yet another amazing place so today we're going to continue on our series of expounding revelations so as we know that we have been studying on the seven letters to the seven churches and also on last week the rapture where all of us will be taken up into heaven and jesus will come and meet us in the sky well now is the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the great seals So these are the events that are taking place after the rapture itself. So we will not be here, but it's important for us to know as well. Know that all kinds of things are happening and happening and happening. In Matthew 24 verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. These are just the birth pangs. So we know that an increase in number of frequency and, and events happening. We see that wars are happening. We see that plagues are happening. Sicknesses are happening, even socially the way people are behaving things are already in in like a upheaval and things are only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse so even more periods of floods earthquakes volcanic eruptions tsunamis that have been on the increase we can see from the chart itself and also you can download the chart from uh, our, our website on what is taking place in, in the the timeline in revelation where it was the rapture we saw last week uh, the, the last ablaze and also we followed by tribulation the last three and a half years is the great tribulation followed by the physical return of Christ and then we have the millennium reign so before I start and continue on what is this four horsemen and wow why does it sound so cool and all that but what does it actually mean and 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 what the Bible is trying to tell us about what is going to happen so before I start let's pray thank you Lord we lift up everything to you pray that you speak through my mouth think through my mind the words that you have for us to learn about you Lord even as we go on this four, uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse and the seven seals and the message of hope that you still have for your people we cast all our cares, worries, burdens, anxieties completely to your hands. We take your peace instead. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Reading Revelations, right, even since young, I'll always be confused because it looks so like so many things happening and so many kinds of analogy and and uh, figurism or uh, figurative meaning and symbols that are in it and just kind of wondering what's happening why so strange why there's so many descriptions and and it always seems very confusing and the more that you read on it online the more confusing it is because people have their own theories their own speculations and not just that but you get so filled with fear that your focus is not on Christ itself. You get so filled with fear and so filled with doubt and insecurity and the assurance in this world that oh, the forces of Mother Nature will be so devastating it will bring an end to this world. The stock market would go. Then the economy, boom! 
the dollar, boom, and then pandemonium in the streets, war, genocide, ba -ba 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 boom, boom, boom. You start to stray away from the revelation of Jesus Christ into the revelation of the Antichrist instead. So, we are not going to focus so much on all the bad things that are happening and all the doom and the gloom that is happening, but really on Jesus Christ. Always keep that in mind. So here we look at the seven seals. So we know that there are seven trumpets which proceed from the seven seal and the seven bowls proceed from the seven trumpet. Now everything is seven, seven, seven. Why do we have seven? Because we know that seven is also in the Bible a perfect number uh, of something divine under God's direction. So just like we have uh, creation in itself and God rested on the seventh day. So we know seven is a very specific and divine and special number. So the seal generally refers to the conditions of the early part of the tribulation. Now remember that we won't be here. So the four horsemen of the apocalypse is where we see it all take place from the first seal itself. Revelation 5 verse 1, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. So what is the scroll? What are they opening itself? It is God's will, God's inheritance. We know that when a person passes away, they leave behind a will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! When we look inside the wheel, we, we see that, oh, they have cars, they have maybe a safety deposit box, maybe they have a bank account, maybe they have all kinds of jewelry, and they list it all into the wheel and saying, okay, who's going to get what, who's going to get what, who's going to get what. So in this scroll, we see God's will itself. So it is outlining the great inheritance that God has purchased for each and every one of us. And now we are seeing what's going to happen to the earth itself. So in the first seal we see is the white horse with a bow and a crown. The Antichrist, where it pictures the Antichrist and the false teaching. So we see that in Revelation 6 where the first horse, uh, the first seal is revealed. So here it is, he is given a crown and it's like uh, uh, the term itself means is Corona. And where do we get Corona from? What do we remember it from? It's from coronavirus, right? That crown is from there because of the shape of the virus itself, the shape of it. So just like right now, we are hearing all kinds of conspiracy theories, all kinds of fear where, oh, if you do this, then you get the DNA of a chimpanzee. Or if you do this, then, oh, you, you, you get this kind of sickness and you get that kind of sickness. And then all kinds of theories of the methods of uh, and, and we are so confused with all the fake news that are happening around us. And just like that, it introduces the Antichrist and the false teachings that the Antichrist is going to bring. See, the Antichrist doesn't mean that you are against Christ or that you are fighting against Christ, necessarily fighting, but it could mean anything that takes place over Christ, anything that takes priority over Christ. So this could be anything, this could be you know, even our own job, what God has given and blessed us with a job and yet it takes priority over Christ when it comes to prayer time, when it comes to uh, setting aside time for the Lord. Or maybe in people, God has blessed you with a great partner but yet that partner distracts you or that partner is not the one that's leading you towards Christ. It could be something that is good in itself, you know, a good person in itself but we get so carried away that we put it over Christ. And we also see that um, this horse, the, the rider has a bow but no arrow. And so we see that what could begin, begin as a peaceful political economic maneuver start out as just that, start out as a peaceful way of having all kinds of treaties and all kinds of ways to bring peace into the world. But we see that God describes this as actually a deception to take over. The next one we see is the second seal which reveals the red horse which is the given the power to take peace and to cause that war and strife. We see that a lot of lives are going to be lost at this stage. So a, lot, a large sword is given here, it's a large knife, a slaughter knife where we can also see that it's not just in the physical of wars and all kinds of things happening but actually in our own daily life, within the people's life itself. Wars and strife happening within the family itself, uh, fighting, destroying uh, the harmony that exists during the strife, causing division, causing fights. The next one we also see is the black horse with scales. Now this is not the dragon scale, okay, the fancy dragon with the nice big scales or uh, this is not a fish with scales. We're not talking about those kind of scales, those uh, marvelous dragons, no. We're talking about the economic scales itself, how people used to measure 
measure the weight. So here in this, we see that it's talking about the economic skills that are going to be in an upheaval. The famine that's going to happen is going to be lack that is happening upon the earth. So that hyperinflation so that people will not be able to buy food and really eat it and enjoy it but they will be starving because of the prices. And the next one you see is the fourth seal where is the pale horse, which from here it brings the death and sickness and the pestilence from and the wild beasts. So here is where a lot of death, a lot of sickness, a lot of pestilences are happening as a result of that. Here we see that so many things are happening and it almost feels like a movie or one of those futuristic movies where they try and predict the future. future and instead of predicting a, a nice beautiful future like they used to do in Hollywood now it has become something else instead that predicts doom and gloom based on the human heart itself and it's not hard to see why so we see from all this right it's almost like a movie and then the next one the fifth seal crying for relief in Revelation 6 uh, it is not, now these are the saints that are crying out to God These are not the saints who are in the church itself, me and you But the people who are saved during the tribulation Yes, even people during the tribulation can and still be saved In Revelation 6, 11, then each of them was given a white robe They were told to wait a little longer Until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed As they had been was completed now you may say, well that's unfair, you know, you, you let them stay there even longer, let them suffer even longer. But actually, there's extension of time to give even more chance to people to be safe, even more chance to people to, to come to God and come to Christ. That love and care is still there from God itself. And so the next one we see is the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake and the stars falling. Stars you could say is like a meteorite maybe. In Revelation 6 verse 12, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll, rolling up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Now it could be from, like I said just now, the stars falling like a meteorite or um, some kind of natural phenomenon where the moon turns red itself. And, or it could even be that atomic explosion, the nuclear explosion that happens that causes the great earthquake, even the mountain and the islands are all moved. So. Once the rapture has taken place, once all of us are not there anymore, we who are Christians, we who are praying, we who are uh, living with the Holy Spirit, guiding us, guiding our steps, when we are all taken up, all that goodness is also taken up. And that's where evil has its full reign for all the happenings to take place. Now! The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So that's where it opens the way for the Antichrist to come and all the demonic forces to bring its full force upon the earth. Now you may say, God, how can you let all these things happen? Like, isn't that very unfair? Or how can bad things happen now itself when we are still here? And that's because the world is in itself in the process of decay. Everybody on earth is dead in a year. How could this have happened? It has already been in the process of decay. Sicknesses have existed for a very long time from the moment that sin entered into this world and has already been decaying. We know that there's all kinds of upheaval. We saw in Matthew 8 is the birth pangs of the shakenings that are happening and happening and happening. But praise God that we won't be here for this tribulation that is going to take place. And so the next one we see is the most important part of Revelations and which is what we need to focus on. Not so much on all these uh, things that are happening. Of course, we have to know it. We have to understand what's going to take place. Uh, but 
we are not so focused on it until our whole mind is so filled with conspiracy theories. Our whole mind is filled on the fantastical thing. Don't get overexcited. Just keep very calm. Mystery things that are happening, but on the revelation of Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is, is revealed in the great seal. So you are sealed with his spirit and blood. Revelation 7 was uh, 3. Do not harm the land or the seas or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes. We know that in spite of all the things that are happening, God has already put his seal upon his people. In Revelation 7 verse 9, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, so we know that a great revival may happen itself. In verse 17, For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their I. So we see the description of Jesus Christ here, not so much of all the things that are happening and all how cool it is and what colour is the horse and, and what they're carrying. Of course, it's important to know that and important to, to even more remember how much we have to reach out to our friends and tell people the good news about Jesus Christ. But the main thing about Revelations, we see in verse 17, for the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. What is the description of Christ here? Not Christ who is up there reigning over all and, and, and causing the, destruct, the destruction. He is not causing the destruction. It is already in process of decay. We know that the devil, uh, it means di he, it is diabolical. He, he wants to do all kinds of things to divide and destroy the earth. But Christ is there to restore and protect his people and the description we see here is as a shepherd. What kind of shepherd? What, what do you know by shepherd? Shepherd is someone who leads us hand by hand, who walks with us step by step, who, who guides the sheep, doesn't let the sheep just run off a course and, and suddenly a wolf finds the sheep uh, that is straight far away from the shepherd. No, the shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd looks out for the sheep and leads them to springs of living water, wipe away every tear from their eye. And that's the description of Christ itself. Christ, Christ himself, who takes care of us, who leads us to springs of living water. So even in this time of distress and all the bad things that are happening, it's kind of it's almost kind of hard to have that same level of faith even when you are looking at uh, all these news that are happening and, and sometimes a natural phenomenon, sometimes it's what people are doing. And we are looking at that and sometimes it feels like, God, I don't know how I can feel about my own generation in this earth anymore. I feel like I, I, I don't know if there's any hope for my generation. I don't know if there's any hope for my future. God, I don't know anymore. But we know that Christ is your shepherd and wherever he places you, he will guide you and lead you to springs of living water. He will bless your every step. Yes, there's going to be distresses. Yes, there's going to be all kinds of happenings and you won't even be able to predict. And yes, there are all kinds of things that are going to happen. But we know this, that Jesus Christ is has already put a seal on us. He has already given us the Holy Spirit who is there to guide us in our exams, there to guide us in our decisions so that we know that we are not alone. And this is the message of hope that you can bring to your friends. Sometimes you may have friends who have a lot of problems, maybe at home or maybe in their own life and they don't know who to talk to and they don't have any plans or sometimes they try all kinds of ways and go on Instagram, TikTok to find some kind of relief, spiritually relief, not knowing what they're actually entering into to find that peace. Well, here is your message of hope that you have for them. You can tell them that yes, the world may be getting darker and darker, but God is there. God is here. God is here to help us and He will lead us to springs of water. He's our shepherd. Jesus wants to be your friend. And amidst all the things that are happening, He wants to hear you. He wants to understand you. He, he wants to be there for you. He wants to help you in your exams. He wants to help you in your family, in, in, in the things that you need, maybe even in health. Jesus is here and He wants to help you. And just like that, you can save a soul even before this tribulation takes place. You are, you are able to be that mouthpiece to your friends even before all these things are going to take place. So this 2022, make it a priority. 
to spend time with Christ. You don't have to be one hour until you fall asleep. But just for a start, maybe start with 15 minutes. 15 minutes a day just praying in tongues. And it's not hard to find. Even when you are on the way to school, even when you're driving to your college, even when you're driving to work, it definitely takes more than 15 minutes. Or even when you're walking and you're just out there, maybe you're getting ready of things, you can still pray you can still pray in tongues. Even when you're exercising, you can still pray in tongues. Spending time with the Lord and He's able to grant you the discernment and the peace that you need. So in Revelation 3, 21, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. So we are able to come to the throne of grace because we know that God is the one that takes care of us. We know that Christ already paid the price for us. And in spite of all these things that are happening, all the seals that are being revealed, the war and strife, the upheaval that is happening upon this earth, we are not focused on the fantastical things or the fact that, well, Hollywood creates such a cool movie about the future, but on the main focus, not on humanity's destruction, not on humanity's doom. The main focus is actually the revelation of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ came down upon this earth to die on a cross for His people. So that when He died on the cross for us, He took all our pain, He, he took all our sin, He took all the mistakes. We have been made anew in Christ and He has given us the Holy Spirit. We have been marked by the Holy Spirit. We have been healed, uh, sealed by the Holy Spirit so that whatever happenings that are going to take place, we won't even be here and we will be protected at all costs because He truly cares for each and every one of us. That is the love of Jesus Christ. And let's pray. Thank you Lord. Truly we see in this um, message that in spite of all the things that are happening and the seven seals that are happening, we know that at the end of the day, Lord, you are the revelation of hope. You are the shepherd that's going to lead us to springs of living water, that even as a student, we are still able to excel in our studies. Even in our workplace, we are still able to excel because we have the shepherd leading us step by step. And as long as we are walking with the shepherd, we know that you will lead us true and true and, and even to the great rest that you have for us help us lord jesus to be a mouthpiece to our friends to our classmates to the people that we go to work with our colleagues and maybe our friends and family lord help us to be a mouthpiece to share the love of jesus christ to reach out to our friends before it is too late help us to be that mouthpiece and grant us the words to, to speak grant us the courage to speak and grant us the right timing as well. We lift up everything to you. Pray that you bless the week. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So right now on the screen, there's a whole lot of ways where you can give. And while you do that, I just want to encourage you now from Revelation 3 verse 7. These are the words of Him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Such a timely verse in this season where we are assured of what God has promised, no one will be able to take it. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to follow our Instagram account and Facebook account. Well, we also love to get connected with you, so if you're not in a cat group yet, do drop us a tag and we will reach out to you. Also, we love to let you know that they are incredible testimonies as we spend our time together because we love to meet you, pray with you, and learning more about God together. As we pray together and worship together, we will experience incredible breakthroughs. So come on and join us and we will see you next week.